This video explains how to convert a discrete vector to a continuous variable in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example and this example is based on the vector vector that we can create with line two of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right that a new data object is appearing, which is called X. And we can print this data object to the RStudio console by running line three of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that our factor vector contains seven elements and five different factor levels. Now let's assume that we want to convert these data into a numeric continuous variable. Then we can apply the S numeric and the S character functions as you can see in line five of the code. And we are applying these two functions to our factor vector x. And then we are storing the output of this in a new data object, which is called x underscore cont. So if you run line five of the code, a new data object is appearing at the top right, which is called x cont. And we can print this data object to the RStudio console by running line six of the code. And then you can see that we have created a new vector object, which contains the same values as our input object. However, you can already see that the levels of the input object are not shown anymore. And the reason for that is that our new data object is a numeric data object. We can also check that by using the class function as you can see in line eight of the code. So if you apply the class function to our new data object, you can see that the character numeric is returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. And that tells us that our new data object has the numeric class. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.